I know, well, what do we do? What do we do at the present time? And I'm trying to help my brothers and sisters to understand that there's a lot of practical connection and application to these teachings. Mm. So let's go on with our second part of this. So we're going to scroll into this week's um, Torah portion, um, reading and seeding, which uh, can be called benorbet, maybe tekemetet. That means to sit or to dwell in the Hebrew uh, vayeshev or vayeshev, vayeshev or vayeshev. But we wanted to touch on and he commanded, and he commanded them. Vayishlach, Vayishlach, and he sent, some would say, and he sent them, and he commanded them, and we touched on what some of the, the rabbinical, um, the rabbinical, the rabbis and others, what they, um, on a certain level we can say conjectured, um, but what they reasoned on, and this is one reason why we produce this particular this particular um, um, booklet right here, which contains, at least for the first portion, the first uh, series of about 12 or so, this one, uh, uh, Bereshit, you know, Bereshit Berasit, you understand this particular volume, which is a collection of some of the, some of the um, online uh, parsha and portions from so-called Orthodox uh, Judaism, but we need to become familiar with 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 this this our our story, and not that all of the interpretations we agree with, because as we put the disclaimer here, we don't agree with all of them. But some of them are very interesting. It's important for us to to know the other half of the story that we haven't been taught. But when we start to get into the matter a lot of reflections begin to remind us of ourselves and our own experience. And even the interpretation become clearer because we are that so-called ethnic people. But spiritually, they're very, very significant. So in continuing the whole name change with Jacob, Yaakov, and Israel, and the signification of um, Jacob, what does Jacob mean? Um, speak of the natural part of the people. And even the fear of Jacob and his brother Esau is all a part of that. Now, after the wrestling with the angel, or the, quote, man who becometh known or recognized as an angel, a name change goes on. There's, there's, a, there's a connection with a name change. We've learned that in blessing, the word barakah, it means to bless by bending of the knee. And that now explains clearer what the what the, the sciatic nerve or the sinew in Yaakov's thigh being, being taken out of joint signified. And we went through that in the previous um, portion on NEL, on Jacob's wrestling with the angel um, or extraterrestrial, quote, end quote, um, signifies. Now, here and continuing in the basic um, idea, that we left off on, we want to touch on the name Israel. Now, why is this important? Now, first of all, this is the RSS, right? The RSS number um, eight, right? And but this is slash eight and nine. You understand? Because nine begins Vayeshev. You understand? Um, um, number nine begins Vayeshev or Vayeshev. So let's just put Y, Y. Shed, you understand? Why you shed? Or the Norbet, the Norbet, that, 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 ellipsis was that to refer, um, te, em, te, te, em, te, the Norbet, te, em, te. So we're going to leave a little bit of space here so we can touch on Israel because we have to understand who we are, but also our mission is in that name. You see, because a name is a blessing, but there's a mission because there's a covenant connected with it. But as we study this covenant, it also gives us instructions. You understand? Spiritually, psychologically, as well as physically. So this helps to get us out of this present state of inertia. Because we call ourselves the Rastafari movement, 
But when you look at the movement, the movement seems to be in a state of inertia because of the lack of the teachings and the discipline to the teachings of His Imperial Majesty. Individually, each of us individually, and coming together. There's no coming together because individually we are misaligned or unaligned with the will of the Almighty in Christ. And no amount of little games and gimmicks or whatnot to unite the people is going to work until we return to the will of the King of Kings in and according to his Christ. So this is very important and very key for us. So we're going to touch on right now is follow up is a is a is a follow up from Genesis chapter 32 and the Schofield um, footnote. You understand the Schofield uh, uh, footnote that we have in Genesis chapter 32 concerning the name Jacob and Israel. So just to recap. All right, we'll put a little star here. We have Jacob equals the natural man, right? And Israel, right, equals the spiritual man, right? So the spiritual portion of the people. Of we as the once lost but now found black sheep of the Beta Israel. The spiritual portion correctly is Israel. The natural portion is Yaakov, is Jacob. And there's a very important um, example in Isaiah chapter, I think it's chapter 9, verse 8, where it speaks about how the word was sent. The word was sent to Yaakov, to Jacob, to the natural prosperity, to the natural seed, to the black seed, but it lighted or it illuminated as the Peniel and the Fanana, the Penina, it lighted upon the spiritual portion of the people. So those who were spiritual could really receive the light and the revelation of Christ and his kingly character of Kedemal, Wihad, Selassie. So the spiritual portion of black folks get it. The natural portion or the Jacob portion don't get it. They still are Jacob, like the Bible says, they are, you know, they, they are enemies because of the gospel, the Wengel, the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. But they are beloved of the fathers. You understand? Because they represent that natural, that natural seed carrying on from the natural line of descent. But spiritually, they are they are lost. In this particular document that we mentioned before the 50th anniversary of the Imperial Majesty Hala Selassie's first visit to the United States, it's a very interesting document because it touches on the half of the story. Here His Majesty is before the United States Capitol in D.C. in 1954. And seven days before His Imperial Majesty came forward with the Brown versus Board of Education, that whole thing, um, the Supreme Court had ruled in favor of desegregation. Seven days, seven days before the King of Kings, who in Ethiopia, our promised land, is and was king of kings of Ethiopia, but was the minister of education and fine arts. So he's coming to America, and seven days before, they decide all of a sudden to start act like they are, you know, desegregating and and you know, no problem with black folks, so forth and so on. It's an interesting connection. But the spiritual part of the people get it. The natural part is still saying, well, what does that have to do with anything? You know, they don't get it. So we, we need to get this so we understand who's who and also how to behave and how to deal with these and those properly. Because that ignorance that, you know, just because you're black, you're going to get it. You understand, doesn't really work. You might be my color, but you're not my kind. It's not me that say that first. It is the scriptures that say that. So, in understanding now, Israel, here in Romans uh, chapter, Romans chapter 11, in Romans chapter 11, it says something very, very interesting because it speaks about 
uh, chapter 11, verse 26, and so all Israel shall be saved. All Israel. And say all of Yaakov. But all Israel shall be saved as it's written. There shall come out of Zion, out of Zion, in the African Zion, out of Zion, where the connection of the king of kings is significant, the deliverer. And shall turn away ungodliness from Yaakov. Because there's ungodliness in Jacob, in black Jacob. There's ungodliness in Yaakov. For this is my covenant to them when I shall take away their hatiyat, their sin. As concerning the gospel, the Wengel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, as touching the election, that means being of this particular people, this lost sheep people, they are beloved for the Father's sake. They are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and the calling of God, of Jairus the Fire, if you will, are without repentance. Now, you need to understand this. A lot of folks, they'll say this, but I like to ask sometime when I can, i uh, what does that mean? That verse right there, explain that in the context of the scripture. What does it mean when it says in verse 29 of Romans chapter 11, for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance? Does that mean that I can have a calling or a gift of God, but I have not yet repented? I have not yet really had a change of mind? I have not yet begun to think differently concerning the when girl, the good news? Exactly. Now, that's an amazing thing to think about. Think about all those who might have gifts, all those who might have callings, but have not repented, have not thought differently concerning the King of Kings and his Christ, thought differently concerning who they are, who they think they are, in the light or the illumination of God in Christ. It's a very important um, idea to really understand. For as ye in times past have not believed or not mamend Elohim, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so, have these also now not mamend, ale mamend. They didn't mamend, they didn't admit as true. That through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. And we hope through this mercy and this ministry of the good news of the King of Kings, they may obtain mercy. In other words, by obtaining that truth and by thinking differently. For Elohim have concluded them all in unbelief. They have concluded all of them as not at non admittance That he might have mercy upon all. This explains something very interesting because when I think about his imperial majesty in those days, and, and how they treated him, you know, how they sort of brainwash us concerning the King of Kings and even erase him or remove him, disgrace him from our memories. You think, well, how come, how come he just don't fire bun the whole thing? Because look at his word. He's seeking to have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and the knowledge of Elohim. That verse there is Kabbalah all the way. Is Kabbalah. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the what? Wisdom is on one side, knowledge of and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of Adonai, of the Lord, of Gita? Or who hath been his counselor? Who has been the counsel of the King of Kings in Christ? For who have first given to him, and it, not, and it shall not be recompensed to him again? It's interesting when we read, even in this document, about the Lend-Lease programs. You know, Lend-Lease was that they would lend Ethiopia a certain amount to do a project. Not, not give no money, no grant, but Ethiopia would, would do the project and then make a profit, pay up for it, and then give them and square, square it all off. It is reminded of this verse right here where it says, And who have first given to him, and it shall not be recompensed to him again. In other words, his majesty paid off all the debts, you understand, of Ethiopia. When, 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 they, when they borrowed money and money was lent to them from America or the West, it was paid off. And this is known. This is, this is well known. 
while other countries and other people today, they get grants and still are in debt. It makes you wonder. Verse 36, to complete this, this portion here, says, For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Kabur like Alu, Kabur Adinto, Kabur Hailu, Kabur like Adamawi, Haila Salasi, Be Yesus, Christos Sim, Bakul Yehun Yehun. Glory. Now, let's touch on Israel, because here's a summary from verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Yaiko, shall turn away ungodliness. Now that word deliverer in the margin, it says means redeemer. Now this particular word right here, this particular word right here, I think it's based on Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 3. Let's just go there, chapter 30, verse 3. In chapter 30, Deuteronomy 30, verse 3, what does it say? Verse 33, then, that then, the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. It's the same idea from the very, from the very beginning. You understand? Know Straight through world history to this very present time right now. And we can see that turning to the people, you understand? in 1954, even before then, but dramatically in 1954. You understand? See Brown versus Board of Education, and then read this. This is the other half of the story that the Negro civil rights leaders have neglected and failed to teach you, and that connect, connects with the false dreams and lying dreams. That's another lecture and, and DVD you need to check out. Hopefully it will, it will be um, available very soon. Just to understand that aspect, 1954, you understand, Brown versus the Board of Education, seven days before His Majesty's first visit to the United States, the Supreme Court will all of a sudden decide to do that. Now, Israel is so named from the grandson of Abraham, was chosen for a fourfold mission. Here's what we need to understand. Why was Israel chosen? Now, under Israel here, there is a four-fold mission. What is that four-fold mission? Israel is chosen for a four-fold mission. Firstly, to witness to the unity of God, of Ha Elohim Baruchu, in the midst of universal idolatry. Deuteronomy 6 and, four, 6 and 4, Isaiah uh, 43, verses 10 to 12, to witness to the unity. When we say, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, our God, is one. We bear witness, the Shema. You understand? The witness to the unity of God in the midst of universal or global idolatry. And what better time to be a witness to the unity, the oneness of the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the first aspect, let's see if we have enough room to get this here. The first aspect is the witness, to be a witness to the unity of God. That's the first aspect right there, to be a witness. Secondly, what's the second aspect? The second aspect is to illustrate to the nations the blessedness of serving the true God. To witness, right, it's still a witness, but this time it's to the nations. You know, like in Revelation where it talks about, and you will have to go and be called before kings for witness. This is the time we're living in, brothers and sisters. If you was brought forth for a witness, what would you witness to? That's real. You understand? That's real. That's spiritual. 
that is, that is greater than everything in this God-forsaken um, world, seclorum that we are passing through. And there's scriptures that back that up as well. Um, Deuteronomy uh, 33, verse 26 to 29, first, um, uh, I think it's uh, Chronicles, yeah, Chronicles um, 17, verses 20 and 21, Psalm 44, and verse 15. Now, thirdly is to receive, receive get this, the third, see if we still have room right here, the third is to receive, right, is to receive, to preserve, right, to preserve and to transmit and transmit. Well, what do you think? What do you think we're, we're, we're to receive, we are to preserve, and we are to transmit? It's the scripture. It's the scripture. You understand? The Mets of Caduce the true good news, the true gospel, to receive, and this is why the Met of Caduce of His Majesty, 1961 or 62 in its reprint thereafter, is so significant. The real Bible of His Majesty, the real book of the seven seals. Not that fake 1980 so-called Amharic that, that they are um, selling and and, 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 and and putting forward as though it was this. And we still have more to come on this particular matter. But the third aspect is to receive as we received it, is to preserve it. That means to protect it, to ensure its content and quality. And thirdly is to transmit it. And we have a lot of means of technology right now to transmit it, brothers and sisters and mothers. We have a lot of means to do so. Now, this is uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 to 8. And if you know um, that particular area, that's the Shema area. That's where we, where we say the Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. Similar to this, this is how we bear witness, brothers and sisters, holding the scripture, you understand, in that right hand and bearing witness with the left. You understand that there's one, and here is the evidence of the one. Now, the other scripture is Romans 3, verses 1 and 2. Now, fourthly, the fourth aspect, the fourth aspect of the fourfold mission, and we just have room enough to put it right there, is to produce as to his humanity, the Mashiach, the Moshiach, to produce according to his humanity. That means according to his racial type. You know what I'm saying? So when we say black Lord and Savior, that's not just hyperbole. You know what I'm saying? That is being witness to his humanity, to his flesh. You know what I'm saying? That he was born of the flesh of the black Madonna, Kedistin Gilmaria, and therefore he was born black. And Christ is black. The Moshiach, Yehoshua, is black. So the fourth aspect of the true Israel, remember Israel, this is the spiritual man, the natural man could care less about these four points. But the spiritual Israel, the spiritual black people, this is our mission. To produce, as to his humanity, to produce, as to his humanity, humanity, the Messiah, or the anointed. Now, here's what's significant about this, that Israel, from Old Testament to the New Testament revelation in Lich Tafari, in Rastafari, in Kedamawi, Kaila, Selassie, that aspect concerning the head, the Ras, has been done. But now our aspect still continues to produce, according to the seed, the black seed, the Messiahites. You understand? Know Those who are truly of the Moshiach, and that's where we, in a, in a large sense, have lost out, and that's the children. 
That's the children. While many of us were so focused on many other things, that's what got past this generation. And the ones who are really struggling in this time are the children, are the children even in the present time. That's because there's been a whole generation gap. You know, the book of Malachi talks about uh, Elijah, who, if you look at that word, the reverse way is Hila, you understand, would come to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and sons to the fathers. So there would not be a generation gap. But Hannah Salasi, he sung about that generation gap. What we're experiencing right now among black sheeple is that generation gap. Just a little point, a little bit of a reminder there. So these fourfold aspects right here are very important, but according to the Nabim or the prophets in the Biyat, Israel regathered now, because there's also the aspect now of Israel being regathered. Many of us as Rastafari, we speak about this as um, repatriation or the repatriation, in other words, or the coming out, or the, the exodus, or the return to Africa, or forward to Africa, before it was back to Africa, but now forward to Africa in the, in the right sense, the right people. But here's what's interesting about it. According to the prophets, that Israel, which is the spiritual part, that means that the part that gives us the instruction is the scriptures when spiritually understood and spiritually digested and according to its truthful context. You know, in reality, it's the prophets who are giving us this instruction that Israel regathers from all nations, restored to her own land and converted, and converted. In other words, having a change of mind, not being so messed up as niggas are today. See, that's the real conversion process. If you look at it from a human perspective, you'd be like, ain't nothing going to help these niggas. You understand? But there is a point of that conversion, you understand, of Israel, and that's connected with the regathering from all the nations, being restored to our own land and converted, is yet to have her greatest earthly exaltation and glory. Now, these things are to be. But in order to really understand the context of it, it's two other subject matters that we're going to have to get into and you have to learn in order to understand what's the significance of the black Israel. Because all, is, all this is black right here. I mean, it's black. People say, well, anybody can be Israel of any nation. Uh, is that what the Bible says, really? Is that what it teach? No, it's speaking about a particular people, a particular seed here. You see, all nations are blessed through the black sea, even in some sense today. You understand? Or, consequently, vis-a-vis -vis curse. But what we need to understand is the kingdom, the teaching of kingdom, and the teaching of the Davidic covenant. That's what the two other aspects. See, this is the fourfold mission. The fourfold mission is one to witness the unity of God, which is the Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Achad. Secondly, to witness to the nations. You understand? To witness to the nations the blessedness of serving the one true God. To witness to the nations. Thirdly, to receive, to preserve, and to transmit the scriptures. To re receive the, the scriptures, the true scriptures. You understand? The book of the seven seals. I discovered a version that's not the King James Version. For out of Africa came the Garden of Eden. And this is what this book symbolized, the Met of Caduce, the Bible of His Imperial Majesty. This is the receiving, the preservation, and the transmitting of the scriptures. Fourthly, is to produce according to his humanity and according to the humanity, which is speaking of the black seed, the Messiah, and the Messiahites, and those who are of him. You understand?